Ananda's four questions. The use of, thus I have heard, comes from instructions given to Ananda by the Buddha just before the Buddha entered Nirvana. One day Shakyamuni Buddha announced, Tonight, in the middle of the night, I am going to enter Nirvana. When Ananda heard this he was so distraught that he cried like a baby for its mother and called. Buddha, Buddha, please don't enter Nirvana. Please don't cast us all aside. He cried and pleaded until his brain got addled. Probably because he thought that this was what he should be doing. Just then a blind man came by, one unlike other blind men. His ordinary eyes were blind, but his heavenly eye was open. Because he was blind, he wasn't burdened with a lot of false thinking, and his mind was very clear. Venerable one, he said, addressing Ananda, why are you crying? The Buddha is about to enter Nirvana, Ananda replied. How can I hold back my tears? The eyeless elder replied, how can you do your work if you cry? After the Buddha enters Nirvana, we will have to establish many things. There is work to be done and questions to be asked. What questions? said Ananda. The Buddha is going to Nirvana. What is there left to do? What could be more important than the Buddha's Nirvana? The blind man, whose name was Anuruddha, and who was foremost in the capacity of the heavenly eye, said. There are four extremely important matters which must be settled. What are they? asked Ananda. Compiling the sutras is one, he said. With what words should we begin each sutra? True, said Ananda. That is important. It's a good thing you brought it up. I never would have thought of it myself. All I can think of is the Buddha going to Nirvana. What is the second question I should ask? The Venerable Aniruddha said, We have taken the Buddha as our teacher, but when he goes to Nirvana, who will be our teacher? Should we look for another teacher? Right, right, said Ananda. We should find another good teacher. You're quite right. What is the third? Aniruddha said, Now we live with the Buddha. But when he goes to Nirvana, where will we live? That is very important, said Ananda. Without a place to live, how can we cultivate the way? Should we find some place else to live? These three matters are extremely important. What is the fourth? Aniruddha said, The Buddha can discipline evil-natured vicious, but after he goes to Nirvana, how shall we take care of them? Now, an evil-natured Bishu does nothing but disturb other people. If you meditate, he walks around, clomp, clomp, making a lot of noise so that no one can enter Samadhi. When people are walking, he sits to meditate. Look at me, he says. I sit much better than all of you, and pretends to have entered Samadhi. When people are bowing to the Buddha, the evil-natured Bishu likes to recite sutras, and when people are reciting sutras, he likes to bow to the Buddha. In general, he's got to have a special style, the evil-natured Bishu style, and he does not follow the rules. If everyone goes one way, he goes the opposite way. He has no consideration for anyone else, but expects everyone to notice him. He's terrific, everyone says. He really cultivates. He insists on being special, so that others will notice him and say that he is the best. Fiercely competitive, he must be the strongest, outstanding among the best. He stands like an asura with his hands on his hips as if to say, see what a great hero I am. He has to be different and outdo everyone else. When the Buddha was in the world, he could control such evil-natured vicious, and they obeyed his instructions. But after he entered Nirvana who would supervise them? And who could control the evil-natured laymen who say, Look at me. I'm more dedicated than all you other laymen. Actually, it's just because of him and his special style that no one else is dedicated. Aniruddha said, When the Buddha goes to Nirvana, what are we going to do with the evil-natured vicious and evil-natured laymen? These are important questions, said Ananda. I'll go ask right away. He wiped his eyes, blew his nose, and ran off to the Buddha. Buddha, great master, he said. 
I have four questions which I would like to ask you before you go to Nirvana. World Honored One, won't you be compassionate and answer them? All right, said the Buddha. Buddha, said Ananda, you have spoken many sutras. When we compile and edit them, with what words should they begin? The Buddha said, all sutras spoken by the Buddhas of the past, present, and future begin with the words, thus I have heard, which means, the Dharma which is thus can be believed. I personally heard it. Ananda said, secondly, you are our master, but when you enter Nirvana, who will be our teacher? Please instruct us. Those who leave home must first receive the precepts. Then Ananda said, We have always lived with you, Buddha, but when you enter Nirvana, where are we going to live? Shakyamuni Buddha said, When I go to Nirvana, all bhishis, bhichyunis, upasakas, and upasikas should dwell in the four applications of mindfulness. Mindfulness with regard to the body, feelings, thoughts, and dharmas. 1. Contemplate the body as impure. If you know that the body is impure, you won't love it, and without love there will be no attachment. Being without attachment is freedom. So first of all, regard the body as impure. 2. Contemplate feelings as suffering. Feelings are all a kind of suffering, whether they are pleasant or unpleasant, for pleasant feelings are the cause of unpleasant feelings. 3. Contemplate thought as impermanent. Thoughts shift and flow and are not permanent. 4. Contemplate dharmas as devoid of self. Ananda further asked, how should we treat evil-natured vicious? The Buddha said, that is no problem at all. Simply be silent and they will go away. Fight evil people with concentration power. Don't be moved by them. If they are evil, don't be evil in return. If a mad dog bites you and you bite him back, you're just a dog yourself. Evil-natured people are born with a bad temper. All you can do is ignore them. And they will soon lose interest and leave. Oh, said Ananda, it's really very simple. Why did the Buddha tell Ananda to use the four words, thus I have heard? These four words have three meanings. 1. To distinguish Buddhist sutras from the writings of other religions. Non-Buddhist religions in India began their texts with the words, A, or, O, which means, non-existence, or, existence. As these opposing religions see it, all dharmas in heaven and earth either exist or do not exist. If it is not non-existent, they say, then it exists, and if it doesn't exist, then it's non-existent. In general, as far as they can see, nothing goes beyond existence and non-existence. In the beginning there wasn't anything, they write, but now there is. None of these religions speaks of true emptiness and wonderful existence. Their doctrines may resemble them somewhat, but they don't explain them in detail. Buddhist sutras are, thus, they are just that way. The Dharma is just that way. You ask, what is not that way? Everything is that way. If you question it and say, what is that way? Then nothing is that way. Thus, is extremely wonderful. The words, thus I have heard, distinguish Buddhist sutras from the writings of other religions. 2. To resolve the doubts of the assembly. The Buddha knew that everyone would have doubts. After the Buddha's nirvana, while Ananda and Mahakasyapa were editing the sutras, Ananda sat on the Dharma seat to speak the Dharma. Seeing him sitting on the Buddha's seat, the members of the assembly suddenly gave rise to three doubts. A. Some thought, Shakyamuni Buddha hasn't completed the stillness. He hasn't gone to nirvana. Our master lives. They thought Ananda was Shakyamuni Buddha come back to life. B. Others thought, Shakyamuni Buddha has already entered Nirvana. This must be a Buddha from another direction, north, east, south, or west. C. No, said others, the great master has gone to Nirvana. He hasn't come back to life, and the Buddhas of the other directions teach people in other directions. They would never come all the way to the Saha world. 
Why, Ananda himself must have realized Buddhahood. The assembly held these three doubts until Ananda said, Thus I have heard. As soon as he said them, everyone knew that Shakyamuni Buddha hadn't come back. They knew it was not a Buddha from another direction. And that Ananda had not become a Buddha. The Dharma which is, thus, is that which Ananda personally heard from Shakyamuni Buddha. Three doubts suddenly arose and four words resolved them. 3. To end the assembly's debates. Of all the great vicious, Ananda was the youngest. He was born on the day Shakyamuni Buddha realized Buddhahood. And when the Buddha went to Nirvana, Ananda was only 49 years old. Why was Ananda selected to explain and edit the sutras? Old Kasyapa was the eldest. And Madhgalyayana and Shariputra were both of higher status than Ananda. There were many others in the assembly with more way virtue and learning than him. He was the youngest and it was likely that no one would believe in him and that many would try to be first. One might say, I've heard more sutras than you so I should explain them. But when Ananda said, thus I have heard, everyone knew that. These were not Ananda's principles, or the principles of the great assembly. This is the Dharma which I, Ananda, personally heard the Buddha speak. It is not your teaching and not my teaching, it is our master's teaching. You are not first and I am not first. This silenced the assembly's debates.